Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. May God bless you, your respective family members, your neighbors, your friends, and even enemies or adversaries. May you all be blessed. All of you, all of you. I pray and I ask God every single day that He will be sanctified, that His name will be sanctified rather, because He is already the Holy of Holies of Holies. His name is sanctified in heaven. But what I ask God is that His name, His name, the name of our Father, may be sanctified here on earth, because here on earth is a real war between sanctifying His name and the honor that is given to the devil. So, there is a war here. And the one who decides, who is it who decides whether to honor the Father or the devil? It's the person themselves. Each one of us have the intelligence, the ability to reason, the wisdom to decide what we will or who we desire to honor and please, who, whose will we are going to do. If I do the will of God, then I serve God. If I do the will of the flesh, of my heart, or of the world, then I will be pleasing the devil. That's the reality. It's either one or the other. It's what Jesus said. No one can serve two masters. You can only serve one master. One. Only one. Very well. Yesterday, we spoke about the wounds that are healed slightly. And this happens inside of religions, inside of the churches especially, the Christian churches, wounds that are superficially healed. People who carry with themselves a wound, whether physical or spiritual, but it's a wound that is being provoked or fed, sustained by a grudge, a resentment, or an ill feeling towards someone else. Now, think with me, dear friends. Many people, and I'm not here condemning anyone, I'm just speaking about this problem that unfortunately, has been a permanent one. It's a problem that has been inside of the churches, including in the universal church of the kingdom of God. So, those people who are chronically problematic, they cannot get it right with God. They are in church. They are faithful to the church. They are there all the time, two, three times a week, sometimes even every day in the church. But their life doesn't change. They don't receive a new life as Jesus promised. They don't have it. And why don't they see results in their life? It's either because they are not instructed to resolve their inner problem, which is grudges, resentment, or malice, they are malicious towards others, a heart that is given and that easily serves evil, and this is the reason why. Because they hear the word of God, 
but they do not obey his word. And that's why they don't fear God. They do not serve him. They are inside of a church, but they do not serve God because their heart, their soul is contaminated. It's ill. It's sick. It's pointless for the pastor to come to them and say, Oh, sister, oh, brother, may God bless you. God understands. God comprehends. God knows all things. No, this will not resolve. The truth must be said so that the truth may then give birth to freedom and the person will then have their life transformed completely transformed. That's what has to happen. Because the ones who irritated Jesus the most when he was here on earth were the religious people. Did you know that? Did you know that? Jesus met a woman or actually she was brought to him because she had been caught in adultery and Jesus didn't condemn or, or censor her or criticize her. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That was all. Jesus met a leprous man, right? The ten leprous men, and he healed them all. He met a blind man. He healed him. He met all sorts of sinners wherever he went and he answered them all. He resolved their problems. But when it came to the Pharisees, to the scribes and Pharisees, then Jesus got upset. Jesus, let's say, he lost his patience. Let's put it this way. Because they were hypocrites. They kept a hypocrisy within themselves. And hypocrisy is like the yeast. The Bible speaks about this. If you prepare a bread, you make a bread without yeast, the bread looks ugly and small. You bake it and it will look ugly. You have no appearance. But if you add yeast, then yeast will make the bread grow and it looks beautiful, very nice, and looks very delicious. So Jesus met the scribes who would write and copy the Bible. They would copy the Holy Scriptures, the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms. They knew the Word of God very well because they would copy. Back then, there wasn't photocopy machine and things like that. The only way was the following. The person had to manually write the Word of God and they would repeat that over and over again. These were the scribes. The Pharisees were those men who would ostentate let's say, the priesthood, they would serve God. They had the title of a priest who technically seemed to be close to God, but they were not. They were farther away from God than everybody else. Why? Because the scribes, as well as the Pharisees, had, let's say, East within them, meaning the hypocrisy that made them look like something beautiful and wonderful externally. But on the inside, they were like whitewashed tombs. On the outside, they looked beautiful. But on the inside, full of dead men's bones and uncleanness. So, Jesus condemned them strongly, the scribes and the Pharisees. You can read this in chapter 23 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 23, you are going to see that Jesus condemned these men, this kind of men. He called them brood of vipers. 
brood of vipers. Why? Because not only did they conduct themselves improperly, but they would also pass on this hypocrisy to all those who would go to them. And that's why God sent the prophet Jeremiah to say to those people, look, he said like this, because from the least, from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, he was talking about the priests, everyone is given to covetousness. They were attached to money. They were lustful. The desires of their heart, which has nothing to do with a person of God. When a person is of God and spiritual, they are focused on the spiritual things. They want to know what God wants from them. Their thoughts are focused exclusively on doing the will of God. And they have to be pure. Their heart must be empty from east, empty from thoughts and personal desires and covetousness and personal desires. They have to be clean on the inside in order to offer God sacrifices of praise that please God. But to these Pharisees, hypocrites, God says like this, because even the prophet that was the highest authority at the time in Israel, so from the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. Falsely. Meaning that they were inspired by the devil. Falsehood. And such falsehood would happen because of their desire for money and temporary benefits that they had due to their, their spiritual authority. So Jesus condemned them. He condemned them. He prayed. He taught. He said, I didn't come to condemn, but when it came to the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, the religious ones, the officials of that religion who should have or they should be an example to the people, but they were an example of hell. They served the devil and people became corrupt because of that. People were corrupt and committing idolatry because their priests were living contrary to what they were preaching. So they would deal falsely and would tell people, no, my sister, God understands. God knows all things. He comprehends. Meaning, in other words, look, God forgives this small sin that you carry. He will overlook it. He knows we are human beings. And therefore, we make mistakes. So don't worry about it. And the person would then keep, or the priests would stimulate in people that malicious heart, to be malicious towards others, having a sharp tongue, falsehood, hypocrisy. Then people were sick due to the fact that they were being they were being wrongly conducted by the priests so they would try to heal their wound or hurt superficially slightly saying go in peace my brother go in peace my sister when they themselves had no peace and if I have no peace, how can I give peace to people who have no peace? Yes or no? Isn't it true? If I have no life, how can I give life to others? But that's how things were. 
and it's still like this inside many religious institutions. I usually say that religion is a factory of hypocrisy and hypocrites. Disgracefully, this is the truth. But the truth is written. It's being professed and determined. God speaks. The words that proceed from my mouth shall not return to me void. What I determined will happen. When God speaks, things happen. So, if He judges in a way that will prevent a person from receiving salvation because of a grudge, a resentment that they have within them, there's no other way, dear friends. Only once the person converts, meaning once they change their mind, no, I'm going to fix my life before God. I will repair this problem that I have. I have this problem with my brother. I will resolve this problem that I have with him. Because it's pointless for me to continue praying and fasting. It's pointless to give offerings and tithe. All of these are pointless. Why? Because if I keep a grudge, against my brother, against a person, how can I approach the altar and offer to God offerings and sacrifices? He does not accept it. He does not accept it. Did you know that? It's not just offerings. It's the works that you do, helping the poor, you comfort others, but you yourself are not comforted. I mean, you try to please God, but He's not pleased by you because your heart, your soul is contaminated, is stained by sin, especially due to unforgiveness. Because if I... If I want God's forgiveness, first, I also have to forgive those who hurt me. If He forgives me, but I don't forgive my neighbor, then I am condemned. Jesus spoke a parable about a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. He speaks about this. Therefore, dear friends, it's pointless to say, Peace, O oh sister, Peace be with you, and to say beautiful prayers, wonderful prayers. But if they are empty, empty, nothing is resolved. This is the problem with the wounds that are healed slightly. People are spoiled, pampered inside of the church. And the servants, the supposed servants of God, don't say the truth not to offend the church members so they don't lose church members so they don't lose their tithe and offerings that's the reality that is the pure reality i my apologies but i speak what god places in my mind in my mouth i will speak it Sometimes I'm a bit harsh and even intolerant and rude. But I don't mind if people say, Oh, I didn't like Bishop said this and that. What can I do? If you liked it or not, what can I do? What matters is what God tells me to do. And I will go there and do it. I obey. So if you accept it, amen. If you don't, what can I do? If you want to go to another church, there's no problem. It's your life. You can do whatever you want with it. But one thing I know, I have a commitment with my Lord who called me. And I have to tell people what God tells me to, to tell them. What He teaches me that I should teach them. Therefore, dear friends, 
It's like what we said yesterday. It's pointless for the person to give offerings and sacrifices and prayers and fasts and etc. if they carry within themselves a grudge. It's pointless. Jesus teaches that. If you read Matthew chapter 5 and verse 23, I'll read here for you. Pay attention. Look at what Jesus says. I will read exactly what he said, so you won't miss not even a word. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. He says like this, pay attention. Therefore, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, comma, and there remember that your brother has something against you, your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, do not give the gift, do not give the offering, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly. Jesus says, agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. So Jesus is speaking here clearly. Your behavior, my behavior, our behavior, the kind of behavior that no one can, let's say, run away from. No one, not even a pastor, a bishop, a cardinal, or whoever, no one, not even the Pope, nothing and no one can escape from that. No one is immune from the situation here. If you have a grudge in your heart against anyone, you need to be free from that. If you are a politician, and there is a lot of that in politics, isn't it? Politics is terrible. I can only imagine. So, you have a grudge within you, you can even become the president. But if this grudge is inside of you, you will die slowly, in small doses. You are going to be feeling pain, this pain, because this grudge will grow and grow and grow until it comes to the point that you become cold, spiritually speaking, frozen, spiritually speaking. Therefore, dear friends, get rid of this. Before you go to the altar and know that your brother has something against you, go and reconcile with him. But if your brother has already died, then it's over. He's already dead. So you have to look after yourself now. So forgive. If you have anything against them, pray, Oh my God, I forgive that person. You forgive that person even if they are dead. Because you have to deliver yourself. You have to free yourself from this curse that is a grudge. And once you are free from this curse by forgiving, you need to do your part. If the other person if your brother does not accept or they reject your apology, it's their problem. You've done your part. You obeyed the word of God. You presented to God your sincerity, your purity, your conscience is now clean, so it is now my father. I have nothing against anyone. And if anyone has anything against me, I pray for them. 
you have to set yourself free. Once you are free from this burden of grudges and resentments, then straight away you are healed, you are delivered. The devil has no rights over your life anymore. You are free, completely free. Because you forgave, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Isn't this nice? It's very nice, very glorious. If we forgive, we are forgiven. But then comes the problem. Bishop, how can I forgive if my heart does not want to forgive? Well, I've been talking about this as well. You have to do your part. Do what you can do. What can you do? You can pray for that person. Oh my God, bless that person. When you say like this, I bless that person. God bless so and so. Then you are automatically forgiving that person because you wish them well. Did you understand? Do that. It doesn't cost you anything. You just have to speak regardless of what the heart feels or not. Did you understand? Dear friends, this is the reason why many people have had their life stagnant, even though they are in the church. Or they've been in church for 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years even. And the longer they are in the church with a grudge, the, the stronger this grudge becomes, the stronger the enemy becomes, which is the devil. And the person gets weaker and weaker to the point that they reach a level where there is nothing good in them anymore that pleases God. Think about this. We are going to be back here tomorrow. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.